Hey guys, welcome back. Today I have something really exciting for you. We are going to be using Surreal DB. Now I've never used this before on my channel. And the reason I'm using it is because I used it once and it was so simple to use, so simple to install and get started with. And I thought, you know, this is a really awesome DB. The, the developer experience around this database is very, very awesome. So I've built a project with Rust Axum, which is a Rust web framework, which you've already seen because this video is part of the 50 Rust project uh, playlist series on our channel and in one of the videos you've already seen axum so uh, this video combines rust axum and surreal db and as you can see surreal db is running on one window and uh, and rust is running another window and using my postman i can call these apis right so i can uh, first create a to do so we're building a basic to do uh, but then having the having a basic project will basically help you uh, understand how to work with Rust, Axum, Serial because all these three things might be new to you. Uh, and you can also get by ID. So whatever ID that I got from here, <clears throat> I'm gonna use that. So we have get to do's, we have create to do's, and we have uh, get by ID. So as you can see, all of everything is working perfectly fine. I'll use the ID again for update, updating the to do. So that also works perfectly fine. And then I'm going to finally go ahead and delete it. Right. So we're going to build a complete CRUD for this. Okay. So everything works perfectly fine. We're building a complete CRUD for uh, Rust, Axum, and Surreal. So I'll take you through the code very quickly and let's get started. So we're in my VS Code and I've used a very clean project structure for this particular project. So you see you have uh, API, application, domain, infra. And then you have these two files, which are librs and main.rs, right? And inside all of these folders are other folders and files. So this is how I've uh, kept it like very clean, very structured, very organized. And uh, let's get started with the main.rs file. So here you see that I'm importing my entire project, which is my surreal API, which is the name of uh, this project, the, the package. So I'm getting that. I'm getting all of my things like the router, the infrastructure. So all of these different packages like uh, or modules, the, the router module, the infrastructure module, uh, and, and all of those things, I'm basically getting those, and then I'm getting Axum, and then I'm using Tower HTTP for course. And in the course layer, uh, what I've defined is, I'm going to allow origin uh, localhost 3000, which could be my front end, and then I'm going to allow methods like get, post, patch, and delete, I'm going to allow credentials, allow headers as well, like authorization, content type, all of those. Then uh, I'm, when the server starts, I'm going to say server started successfully, and this is after uh, I create the router with the layer for the course as well. And I get that in my app. And using app, uh, I use Axum and serve, and then with the listener, listener created here, which is using Tokyo TCP listener bind at port 8080. So this project will run on port 8080, and it's going to serve the API uh, on port 8080. Okay, so this is what the main.rs file is doing. Now in the lib.rs file, you're just getting all the other modules like the API, application, domain, and infrastructure which are defined up here on top. So let's start with the API. Now API has two files. One is the router.rs, the other is the mod.rs. In the router.rs, I have uh, everything to do with my routes. So I have my slash API slash to do's route. But let's start with this one, which is the slash API slash health checker. And uh, you, you're supposed to hit with the get method on this route and you will uh, then be redirected to this function called the health checker handler. Where is it? It's coming from super. That means it's in the same folder. Uh, here it is. So health checker handler. It's in the mod.rs file for this API folder. And as you can see, it says working fine, thanks. And it gives you a nice little JSON response and return that in the JSON format. So this is what the router is doing. Uh, so the health checker handler is doing. So and, and then we have the other route, which is slash API slash tools. This is what I was calling here. As you can see here, slash API slash tools. I was calling that. Uh, in uh, in my postman. So here I have two methods, the post method, which calls this function called the create to do command and the get method, which calls the get all to do query. So you notice something interesting here. One is called one is a command, another is a query. So what I've done is I've actually divided the project or, uh, or the functions into two different uh, categories, the commands and the queries. So this keeps things very, very uh, clean. And you'll see very soon how I've organized that in, in the structure. 
uh, in the project structure. And then I have the route, which is slash API slash to do slash ID, which is, uh, which are all the things which would require an ID. For example, getting a particular to do or uh, updating a particular to do or deleting a particular to do. So all of those would, would require an ID. So those routes are separate and these routes are separate. And uh, you can see the commands and query and I'll let quickly show you how that's working. So here in my application folder, I have two things. One is one are the commands, the other the queries. And that's how I was getting those. So if you notice here, uh, in, in your auto.rs file in, inside API folder, I'm getting the create applications, right? Everything was in application, like I said, commands and queries. So I was getting from uh, application the commands uh, and the commands are the create to do command, the update command and the delete command. And I'm getting all the queries. So queries are everything that you query the database with, like getting all the to-dos or getting a to-do by ID. Those are queries and commands are you, you take an action, right? Anything that takes an action has been separated. Anything that is just read is, is separated, right? So you know which, which are the critical files. Obviously, where you're making these changes, that's the more critical file. So when I go to my application now, uh, I see all the commands. These are obviously the more critical things. So like, for example, create to do, delete to do, and update to do. And then I have some requests. So let's start with requests and look at all the commands. So in the request, I have the update to do request, which is just defining the struct for update to do request, which has a title, the content, and completed whether true or false. This is all there. So when I when I look at the request, right, a request to update uh, a particular to do, this is what I'm expecting. I'm expecting the title, the content of the entire to do, and whether it's completed or not. Uh, the mod.rs file just has that uh, the, the public mod. So I'll just um, collapse this for now. The create to do command, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> has axum and chrono because we, we will be working with some timestamps like uh, created at and updated at, so that's why we need chrono. And then we need these crates, which are the domain, which has the models. Uh, so in, in my domain folder, I'll, I'll have the models for to do, which will define what a to do actually looks like. We've not done that yet. Uh, and the infrastructure has the data and repositories like to do repository, which is everything to do with the database. All right, so here in the, uh, the create to do command, what I'm doing is I'm um, getting the body in JSON format and I'm creating a new repository, the to do repository. And first I'm getting uh, that um, to do by title, right? And if that to do already exists, then that's a problem because I can't really create that to do, okay? So we're using name as the, the, the title or the name of the to do as the unique key. So here I'll say st status code as bad request because obviously the to-do already exists. But if everything went fine and we didn't find a to-do with that title name, I'm going to uh, set my date time to local now and I'm going to create say body. Now body is something that you've already received in this, um, in this function, right? Uh, in, in the request. So you set the completed as false because you're creating a new to-do. Obviously, it won't be completed by default. So it'll be uh, false by default. You created at timestamp and the updated at timestamp is what you will update, uh, you'll create here. And you will uh, get all of that in your to-do, which is your body is going to be uh, accepted inside to-do. And the to-do um, then is going to call the repository function. So here we're calling the create to-do uh, function in, in our repository uh, and passing to-do. Okay, and then whatever we get back again is in to-do. And this is what we are going to send as a JSON response. And we're gonna tell the user, hey, everything is created, uh, everything is perfectly fine, and we'll send him the JSON response back, which is exactly what we were getting when you looked at the create to-do function. You're getting the JSON response back, right? Uh, with, with a success. So that's our create to-do. Now, delete to-do is, uh, is, is uh, like how delete to-dos should be, which is, you have your ID and you first try to find that particular item by ID. So only if you, uh, if you, if you find it, then you delete it. And then what we, we send status code, okay, no content, which was 204, which is exactly what we received here. And delete, uh, which is 204, no content, just saying that, hey, everything is deleted. Uh, and um, otherwise we have also an error response uh, if things go wrong. So uh, the update to do function is, slightly longer and here what we have is we first uh, find that particular uh, that particular value by ID because we are uh, changing the values of a particular to-do. So first we'll, what we'll do is we'll find that uh, particular to-do and then we will start setting these values like date, time, title, content, completed and then we'll create our payload which, uh, which will be a complete to-do and we'll have our ID, title, uh, uh, you know, uh, content, 
and then our values for completed, created ad, updated ad, all of that. And then finally, once we've created our complete uh, payload, uh, we will call the update to do function in repository. Now repository, like you, like you know, has all the functions related to the database. So it's going to be talking to the database. And all we have to do is pass the ID and the new payload, which is which are all the new values that we have to replace it with. And you get back something called as a to-do response, which is what we send back to the user saying that, hey, everything was updated perfectly fine. And that's the one that you see here as well in your update uh, in your postman. Okay. And then if there's an error, obviously we'll return back the error as well. So that's what's happening here. In the mod.rs file, you'll see all these three commands, like the create to do command, delete to do command, and update to do command, and also all the requests, which is in the requests folder. Everything is getting uh, made public from here. Then we have our queries. Now queries are two. Uh, we have the get all to do's query and the get to do by id query. Uh, queries, like I mentioned, are things which are not taking any actions on our data or not changing the state of any of the data in the database. That's why they're kept separate because you know these are not very critical. It's just read only stuff. And all the errors that we want to be focusing on are in the commands. That's the folder that we want to keep our eyes on. That's how. That's why things have been separated out here. I really like this kind of a structure uh, for for the project. And then you have the get to do by id um, query, uh, which which just again by creating a new to do repository uh, has gets the id that was received in the function. So you capture that here in the id variable. And all you do is you call the the get by get by id function in your repository by passing the id, and you await for the response. Get that in to do, and you get and you you show the result to the user. This is what you were doing here, which is get. Uh, to do by ID, right? We were showing, we're taking the ID, showing the results to the user. And then we have the get all to do's. The get all to do's, um, again, create a new repository, and then you have a, a to do's vector, right? A new vector, because we want to be sending a collection of all the to do's that have been created. And so you call the get all function in repository and you, uh, you know, capture all of the values in the result uh, in the to do's uh, variable, and then that's the one that you return from this function as a JSON response that we've already seen. All right, so these are our queries and these are our commands. Now we will go to the domain uh, folder, which has nothing but the to-do um, struct. So the to-do struct, to-do is supposed to have an ID, supposed to have a title, the content. So uh, like for example, you know, the description of what the to-do is going to be about and then completed true or false. And then you have created at and updated at the timestamps. So that's what your uh, models are going to have. And then this mod.rs file is just making this mod, mod module public, which is models. So that's what is there in your domain. Now infrastructure, as you know, has everything to do with, uh, with uh, your database, okay? So for example, your uh, serial context is, uh, has everything to do with your uh, context, like for example, the username and the password. Now, I'll quickly show you how to start off the serial database on your local machine, uh, and and uh, where can you go to install it as well, so that everything makes more sense. And then we have the to-do uh, repository. So uh, these were all the functions that have we have been calling up until now. So the, these have all the fu functions like get all, get by ID, uh, get by title. Get by title, if you remember, we called it when we were trying to create a new to-do. We just checked if this particular to-do with this uh, title exists or not. And you have your create to-do, you have your update to-do, and your delete to-do uh, functions as well. So let's take a closer look. Uh, the new function creates a new to-do repository, which the to-do repository is just a struct with the table string. And uh, you're getting that from to do, and then the get all, the get all basically uses the database and selects uh, everything in the database and returns all the records. That's what get, get all is doing. So this is where this is uh, the place where we're using serial DB. Actually, all the all the things like DB, which uh, enables us to uh, call the DD, uh, to to work with the DB and uh, error, uh, throw error, all of that stuff. And then you have get by ID, so you pass the ID by cloning it, and you uh, pass the table, and then you get back the particular record. If you don't find it, you'll say to do with that ID not found. And get by title is is just having a simple uh, query, which you have probably seen in uh, MySQL or Postgres, where you say select star from to do where title is equal to uh, dollar title, which is the dynamic title value which we're passing out here. And if we're going to bind it and then await and then return the record if we find it. If we don't find it, we'll say total title not found, uh, which is actually what we want should happen. 
And then you have the create to do, so you use the db.create function to create by passing the content, because for creating a to do, you need uh, the complete content of the to do. And then you have update to do, so update is just calling the update function uh, with the content, uh, because the update function has the ID, and then you have the new content that needs to be updated. Delete is just calling the db.delete function, and that's how the complete repository uh, file is, is working. And here you export db context and db repositories. Context again, just to remind you, has the username and password. I, I've been repeating this uh, because just want to tell you that look, uh, the DB starts on localhost 8000. That's how you have db.connect, and this is the DB connection you're passing uh, out here. That's how you're able to access the DB. So uh, now, so why is the username and password important? Because this is how you uh, now uh, Serial DB gives you uh, gives you the ability to start off Serial DB with just one command. And uh, with with the username and password of your choice. So let me let me show you how I've done it. So here, if you see how I've done it, is I've said serial start, okay, minus minus user, user is root, and minus minus password, password is uh, root again, and minus minus auth and memory, right? So this is how I have started my serial DB. It's just one line. And uh, my project, I started with just saying cargo run or cargo. After cargo build, you can just say cargo run, project will work. Now, this project is already there in my GitHub. Let me show you quickly. So the project is here. I'm Michael Sharma 90 on GitHub. And the project is called Rust Serial DB API. So the entire project is there. All you have to do is just uh, copy and clone it. Now you know how it works, right? You, I've explained all the, the, all the files to you. And uh, you can, I've given you the instructions to run it, right? So uh, to install SerialDB on your PC, it's very simple. Uh, and I've mentioned the instructions in the README file. So there's just one command for Linux, just one command for Mac, and just one command for Windows, right? All or any operating system, just one command. It just installs SerialDB very quickly. And to run it is just one command, and it's serial start, uh, the user, the password, and auth. Uh, so this is why you know this is awesome because it just enables me to run. Uh, with just one command and setting the username and password. Uh, and then there are instructions for working with the project, all right? Now, the uh, two things I want you to check out is when you are on my channel, uh, there are some important links. The first one is the free Discord community, and the second one is the Golang AI course. So I'll just quickly take you through these. The Discord community is a free community where we all hang out. So everybody who follows me on YouTube, uh, I talk to everyone, and I'm always there answering all sorts of questions. So make sure you check it out. This is where we hang out. The other is the six AI plus Golang projects advanced course, so which is 26 hours of detailed content, extremely detailed planning exercise for each project is available. You have well-documented code, and each line of code I've explained for these six projects that we've built, six different projects. All of these projects are real-world uh, production-level applications. You build stuff like the Kubernetes AI assistant, the Terraform AI copilot, a very powerful terminal AI assistant, Telegram AI bot, Whisper API bot, and you have the Golang AI Discord bot. So everything is like AI powered. Make sure you check it out. In 2024, if you're looking for a pay raise or uh, looking to change your job, this is the project uh, course that will help you get it all done. Then uh, if you are new to this channel, you want to check out the 50 Rust project playlist because this video is also part of this playlist. The idea is that there are, the projects are in the increasing level of difficulty. So if you just start at the beginning uh, and end with the fi final project, you will know Rust really, really well after build building like 50 projects with me. Everything from Postgres to Axum to Actix, everything is there, okay? And then uh, you have the, uh, the Killer Golang series, so 55 Killer Golang projects. Uh, again, the same concept as Rust. So you build projects and you learn Golang really well. And I have the technology architect course on my channel and the system design course. Uh, then I'm also doing the LLM and Gen AI projects. So there are 20 projects now almost in this series and I keep adding more and more because AI is evolving very fast. So there will be more videos of Llama 3, which has just come out. The more videos coming out soon for that as well. If you're interested in AI, you have to check this out. And then for all the uh, LLM related concepts, so LLM is the new wave which is uh, of AI which is powering Gen AI, right? The whole Gen AI bubble that's going on right now. So uh, all the concepts I'm putting in this another playlist called the LLM concepts. So make sure you check all of this out. All of this is for free on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like this content, comment. Uh, I'll reply to comments as well. And share this with your friends because this is all awesome free content. You're getting a lot of value here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.